All right, so we'll look at the uh, uh, binomial uh, option pricing. Now, the reasoning why this is going to be important uh, is because the binomial option pricing is going to be the basis of black shell. So in other words, if we take binomial and we let it go into the limit where the, the, the amount of time goes to zero, we get all approximate black shell. So everything that uh, you can think of, um, the methodology of Binomial is the methodology that ultimately goes into Black-Scholes. Black-Scholes is just a, um, a version of this in continuous time. So when we talk about the delta and so forth, this, is, this will make sense of what the delta is within the Black-Scholes model. So the important thing is that you understand is we'll, we'll, we'll work with call options. We can do the equivalent for puts. But we have a market with a um, call option bond in a stock. And we call this market complete if... Given any two, we can always replicate the other. So the idea underlying Black-Scholes and underlying binomial option pricing is that if we want the value of the call, what we can do is we can say, all right, well, I'll put a, a portfolio of the bond and stock together that will replicate the call option. And then the price of that replicating bond and stock portfolio is uh, the price of the call option. Equivalently, we'll do, real quick, we'll do a second way where we actually put a portfolio of the call and the stock together, and that will replicate a bond. And then uh, we can price the option that way. But the idea of underlying this and underlying Black-Scholes is that uh, in a complete market, we can replicate any security with two of the other. So in other words, what you can also say equivalently is uh, in this market, there's, there's a security that's redundant. In other words, why would we ever need a call option? I can just replicate it with a bond and a stock. In reality, the, re you know, the reason why is, well, um, uh, there, not everyone knows how to replicate a call option and so forth. So that's what, as a financial service, as a bank, what you do is you replicate that call option. So um, they'll replicate the call option so that companies and individual investors can just buy that call option. But in general, the, uh, the argument here is that um, uh, one of these securities is redundant. So the idea, we'll set up a simple binomial model, and we'll say um, the stock price is now 100, right? So the stock price today is equal to 100. And this will either go up to 120 or down to 90. We'll say uh, the exercise price is equal to 110. Uh, the risk-free rate is equal to, uh, let's just say, 5%. Now, keep in mind, the risk-free rate has to be, uh, the risk-free rate here can't be greater than 20%. Keep in mind, the risk-free rate is going to be constrained by um, this return here. Obviously, if the risk-free rate was 30, you can create a really easy arbitrage by uh, shorting the stock and buying the risk-free security. So, um, now under this scenario, what's the, you know, and what we're looking for here is the value of the call option, so the call price at time zero. In this scenario, the call option, at, you know, think of this as one year. In one year, the call option is going to be worth what in the, you know, this is the upstate, this is the downstate. What's the call option worth in the upstate? Ten bucks. So it's worth ten dollars in the upstate, and in the downstate we have uh, the intrinsic value is zero, right? So it's either going to earn ten dollars in the upstate or zero in the downstate. So this is sort of the world we have. Um, this is the, this is no, now notice, and I'm going to talk about this. You know, I'll make a note of it in a second, but I haven't told you the probabilities of upstate and downstate. That's quite important. I haven't told you what the probabilities are. And everything we're going to do forward doesn't assume any probabilities. Um, keep that sort of in the back of your head. That's, that's the Nobel Prize winning idea. If I have to start giving probabilities, then, then this would be uh, sort of worthless because I don't know those probabilities. The, the Nobel Prize winning idea, the, the thing that made this really important is that I don't need the probabilities. In other words, I don't need to know the expected return on the stock. Once I say probabilities of upstate and downstate, now you know the expected return. Uh, but the problem is, we don't know the expected return. This is why we didn't have a formal option pricing model until Black-Scholes. Black-Scholes figured out, using this methodology, how to, um, how to value the option without having to know the, the expected return, the probabilities here. So now the idea, we can do this two, two ways. We can first, we can take a bond in stock and replicate a call. So um, what we can do here is sit there and say, okay, well, what if um, I, uh, let's say, what, uh, what is the, the present value of 90 at 5%. What's that, what's that equal to? Eighty-five point seven one. 85.71. 85.71. 
So the idea here is what if we uh, borrowed this amount at time zero and bought the stock? So let's say uh, we create a portfolio. So consider the portfolio. You know, our, you know, our portfolio is step one, borrow. Borrow 87, uh, 85.71, at 5% for a year, buy stock. Right? So what is this net? Um, the portfolio cost, uh, the cost of the portfolio is, what, 85.71. Um, so what is that? 14.29? 14.29? In other words, 100 minus 85.71. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. 14.29? Yeah. Good. So in other words, this, this, this cost of our portfolio is going to cost us $14.29 at time zero. This is cost at time zero. Now the question is, what does this portfolio look like at time one? So in other words, uh, the value of this portfolio, uh, of you know, our portfolio is going to be 14.29 uh, at time zero. And in the upstate, what's our portfolio worth? Or, or, um, how much is the portfolio worth? Well, we're going to have to pay $90. Right? Uh, and we own the stock, so um, we receive 120 So in the upstate, this is going to be 120 minus 90 Right? 30. 30. And in the downstate, we, we own $90 worth of stock, we have to pay $90, it's zero. So now we've created something that pays $30 in the upstate, zero in the downstate. Now the question is, how did that help us? The call option pays $10 in the upstate, zero in the downstate. So is this helpful to us? Well, you can notice that these, this portfolio we created is just three times that. Uh, uh, is three times the call option. So in other words, this portfolio is three call options. Does that make sense? Okay. So in other words, what I can say is, um, uh, 14 point to, uh, uh, 14 point two nine at time zero is equivalent to three uh, call options. So in other words, three C equals fourteen point two nine. And what's so? What, what does this imply? C is equal to what's fourteen point two nine divided by three? I can't do that in my head. Uh, four point seven six. Three well, four point seven six. So there we go. That's our call value at time zero, 4.76. So in other words, all we did was we replicated something that behaved exactly like an option, and therefore, if it behaves like an option in all states of the world, right, and here we have two states of the world, but in all states of the world, it behaves like three options, therefore, it has to have um, the value. Uh, then an option has to be one-third of, uh, of that value. Good. So now, however, alternatively, we can look at this a different way. So. Now, keep note of this, $4.76. Let's say um, now we, we take a call in the stock and we replicate a bond, and this is going to be the delta hedging strategy. Uh, and this is, this is, you can, from this you'll see how a bank manages uh, uh, option portfolios. So same setup. Now let's say the idea here is um, the delta is by how much the, the option will change for a, a $1 change in the stock. So the idea is how much the option changes for a one dollar change in the stock. So we can simply you know, look at this quick and say, I'll say D for delta. Well, the stock changes by 30, the option changes by 10. Um, I should say, sorry. Uh, this option on top, option changes by 10, stock changes by 30, delta equals one third. So the idea here is if the stock goes up by a dollar, the option will go up by um, uh, 33.33 cents. So how do we know? Now we have to create a, a replicating portfolio again. We have to create a replicating portfolio of the call and the stock, which will replicate uh, the bond. So consider the portfolio um, where we sell one option, sell one call, and buy delta shares of stock. Right? So of course, you know, in this case, we're going to buy one-third shares of stock. And don't get tripped up by this being one-third. You'd never actually create this portfolio for one option. You would do it for um, uh, a, a thousand options, in which case you can buy uh, 333 shares, which will you know, 
be close enough. Or you, you know, uh, you can get as close as you want by scaling up how many options you sell. So this is methodology is done for option portfolios, not one option. So it's perfectly fine to say we buy one uh, one third shares of stock. So if we were to do this, right? Uh, this put this 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 um, portfolio. I'll just say this portfolio is P sub zero, right? Um, you know, P sub zero is 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 uh, worth something at time zero. We'll figure that out. What does it pay um, at time one? So in other words, if we sold one call and buy one third shares of stock, um, then uh, the call we sold, we're going to have to pay ten dollars at time one, right? So we're going to have to pay ten dollars. And how much? Um, how much is is our stock going to be worth? Uh, six sixty six six point six six fifty eight plus one, one twenty. Uh, oh, oh. It's going to be one twenty divided by three. Yeah. Divided. It's just we have one third shares of stock. Right. What's that? Okay. Right. Forty times three is one twenty. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Um, and in the down state, uh, we we the, the option is you know uh, is worth zero. Uh, Ninety divided by three is thirty. That makes sense. So in other words, uh, it's equal to thirty in the upstate and thirty in the downstate. So our portfolio is nothing other than a bond. Right? It has some price, and, and no matter upstate or downstate, we're in thirty dollars in both states. That's, that's, that's actually gone. <laughs> oh no, that's for real taping right now. Yeah, and my editing skills don't really enable me to. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> well, we'll talk about what we want to do with that. Um, good. Uh, so, so this replicates a, this replicates a bond. Um, and so in other words, now we want to find the value of this portfolio. The value of this portfolio, um, at, so first we have to do is find the present value of $30. So uh, what's the present value of $30 at 1%? 30 divided by 1.05. What's that equal to? All right, so it's worth 28 point, you know, so the idea here is this is 28.57. That Because this is risk-free, update, downside, it's $30. Um, and this has to be worth, uh, and again, this is by arbitrage. If it was worth something, they can this, and we can arbitrage. And everything here is by arbitrage. Like, you know, the next step of this is to show that if it's not this, I can make free money. And yeah, that'll be the next one. That'll be the next one. Um, but, uh, good. So the value of this is 28.57. So now we all have to say is um, one-third times the stock price of times zero minus a call is equal to 28.57. Uh, one third, uh, of course, this is 100 in our case. So in other words, the call price at times zero should be equal to 28.57 um, yes, minus one third of 100. What's that equal to? It's going to be a negative number. Negative 4.76, I think. Yeah. Hold on. Next, of course, that's our 4.76. Um, just switch the signs, meaning uh, this is the uh, this is the payoff. So in other words, um, I, I what did I do? Sold the call option. Uh, so this would be reversed here, minus, and I'm going to get the positive 4.76. Yeah. So get the same value. Get the, get the exact same value whether we use the delta hedging method or whether we um, replicate the call option with the bond of the stock or replicate a bond with the call of the stock. Now the only, now the interesting, so now I have to switch gears and tell you sort of the Nobel Prize winning idea behind this or why this is so important. The idea again is we didn't need the probability of an upstate and the probability of a downstate. Why? In other words, we didn't need to know how fast the stock was increasing, the expected rate of return of the stock. We ultimately did uh, is just used, um, you know, what we said is, you know, and what, what's going to happen in Black Shoals is, well, we don't need the drift of the stock. We can just replace the drift of the stock with a risk-free rate. And can you think of why we can replace the drift of the stock? I don't care at which rate the stock is increasing, and, and replace it with a risk-free rate given what we've said here. Because no matter what state you're in, it's a rate. In other words, think of this second where we, where we replicated the bond with the call on the stock, which is what was in Black Shoals. 
Uh, if I sell one call and buy one third shares of stock, I'm I'm hedged, meaning I don't care about how much the stock goes up, uh, because whatever the stock goes up by a dollar, whatever I make, um, whatever I lose on the call, I'll make on the stock. So in other words, uh, if the stock is eight percent, you know, if the, if the drift on the stock is eight percent, if it goes up by eight percent, I'll, I'll um, I'm still delta hedged. I'll, I'll lose here and I'll gain here, an equal amount. So in other words, I don't care by how much because I've hedged out the change in the stock, the delta, right, the delta, um, because I've hedged out the the the, the, the uh, the, the movement in the stock in this portfolio here, then I don't care what the movement is. So I can just assume the stock increases at whatever rate. And what's the most convenient rate, meaning what rate do we know? It's free. It's free rate, right? Exactly. So in other words, that's what's going on here. Um, the really neat thing behind this is I, can, I don't need the expected rate of return on a stock because I'm going to delta hedge out the effect of the stock's movement. Therefore, I can assume whatever drift. I can assume 8%. I can assume um, you know the stock goes up by whatever percent we want. I can throw in whatever probabilities here I want. It doesn't matter to me, I'll it out. So what we do in practice is we just assume that it's um, increasing at the, the risk-free rate. So we have what is termed risk-neutral pricing. The idea is if I price it in a risk-neutral world, it will be the same price in the risk-neutral world and in the real world because um, uh, 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 for this reason, right? Because I've, 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 in the real world, I can, I can delta hedge out that change in the stock price. So does that make sense? Now the one thing is keep in mind, and what you're doing in, those, in the spreadsheet is um, the delta will change. So in other words, um, so long if I change, you know, obviously um, uh, the 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 delta, you know, the delta will not be constant. In this case, the delta is constant over this. In reality, the delta changes all the time with underlying with changes in the underlying stock price. So you have to rehedge and rehedge and rehedge and rehedge, um, and then that's dictated by how fast the, the delta changes. Okay. Good? Yeah. All right. So that explains what's going on behind Black Scholes. So uh, this Black Scholes is just this in the limit when the amount of time goes to zero.